In this video, I'm gonna talk about the seven best places to live in San Diego for millennials. And it's gonna start right now. So welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the seven best places to live in San Diego for millennials. In my previous video, I, know, I mentioned that San Diego's has the third highest population of millennials in the entire United States, just behind Provo, Utah, and Austin, Texas. So I thought this would be a good idea, kind of put a little list together and just show you where people are tending to go to for millennials. Let's get started. Our first one on our list is uh, kind of an obvious one. It's called uh, the towns of North Park and South Park. North Park and South Park are just obviously north of um, San Diego, just next to the north end of Balboa Park. So it's very centrally located. It's got a great main street, the, a ton of bars, restaurants, eateries, coffee shops, a great Philly pretzel place in there in North Park. If so, if any of your East Coasters out there look for Philly pretzels, that's the place to go. Very walkable town. Uh, South Park also has one of the best uh, Italian restaurants in all of San Diego called Bueno Forchetta. Uh, it's got great pizza, pasta, meatballs, so good. So highly recommend checking that out if you ever have the opportunity. Uh, one slight negative on the areas are the schools are not great. It's actually okay for like the elementary school ages. I think Garfield Elementary over there is like a nine out of 10, but as you, as kids get older, the schools tend to, the, the rankings on those schools get a little bit lower. So it's just something to think about. I don't always go off exactly what the rankings are on these things just because they can be a little subjective too, and they just base it off test scores, but you can sometimes still have a great education there. Schools, they also have some great charter schools down in that area as well. So something you might want to check out. So next on our list is another neighborhood pretty close to North Park. It's called Normal Heights, or as the locals call it, Abnormal Heights. Normal Heights was actually named after a school called the State Normal College, which is actually a school for teachers. It later became San Diego State, which I actually just found this out pretty when I was doing this research because I didn't know that. And it has a great main street on Adams Avenue there. It's got a lot, another little eclectic little town there. It's got a lot of restaurants, coffee shops, um, antique shops. Uh, it's got a lot of charm to it. The houses are very unique. They got some craftsman style, love craftsman style houses. Um, a lot of old world charm down there in, in Normal Heights. It's also a little bit more affordable than uh, no, uh, North Park, South Park. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money but still have that same feel, urban, uh, walkable neighborhoods, Normal Heights is a great place to check out. So Normal Heights is super central, kind of a hip, cozy neighborhood, but also very family friendly as well. So you'll see a lot of families walking around with their, their, their newborns or toddlers. Schools over there are, again, they're Pretty good, not great, but uh, compared to some of the other neighborhoods in San Diego. But again, don't always just go by that little number because I think that can uh, hurt your chances to find a, a great education for your for your kids. Next on my list is Little Italy. Little Italy is like one of my favorite neighborhoods in all of San Diego, regardless if you're millennial, you're a senior citizen. It's it's a super walkable neighborhood. You're close to the bay. You're close to the airport. You're close to down the heart of downtown where the Peco Park is, uh, East Village. Uh, the gas lamp. When you're close to Balboa Park, you could probably run to Balboa Park in about 15, 20 minutes from there. It's got some great, the best restaurants in all of San Diego. They got Crack Shack down there, Juniper and Ivy, just so many good restaurants to, like, to list. But if you want a super walkable neighborhood that feels super San Diego, Little Italy is definitely the spot for you. And you can be at the beach in less than 10 minutes. One of the best sandwich places in all of San Diego, the Mona Lisa Deli in downtown in Little Italy is the best. You gotta try that place out. It's a, not the most affordable one on this list, but it's not the most expensive one either. So if you look for something in between, then I think Little Italy is a great place for you to check out. Next on our list, we have UTC, which is also called University Town Center. Uh, it's just uh, east of La Jolla, basically. Um, UTC is re really well known for its big shopping mall, the Westfield UTC Mall. Uh, it's got you know every shopping place you can imagine, Crate and Barrel. Um, they even have like fitness places. Over. Equinox is there, 24 Hour Fitness. They have a great ArcLight movie theater in there that you can order food, drinks into the movie. Um, and they got a lot of businesses close by. Qualcomm is less than 10 minute drive away from there. A lot of headquarters for pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies are very close by. So it's very central. You're kind of on the border of North County, South, South County in uh, San Diego. So you can pretty much get anywhere in San Diego in 20, 25 minutes, basically. They're also building a trolley line in UTC all the way downtown right now that uh, you can take, and I think it should be done in the next year or so. I don't know exactly the time frame on that. You also have UCSD very close by. So if you, you work at UCSD or plan on working at UCSD or you're a student, um, 
then uh, UTC is a great place to live. Next on my list is probably the most expensive uh, spot on this list, but I love it. It's uh, Solana Beach, which we did a video on this not too long ago. You can see the link up here. Uh, see what it's like to live there. But there's, it's, again, it's a very walkable neighborhood, which I mentioned. Most of these places on this list, that's kind of what millennials tend to go. Not Obviously not all millennials, but that's kind of what they look for. A very walkable, um, kind of urban suburb sort of thing. Be this is also a beach community, obviously. A very walkable town. You can walk to the beach. You can walk to the metro, which isn't uh, aren't a whole lot of places you can walk to a metro stop. Solana Beach is one of them. A great little arts district there, which they have a great live music place called The Belly Up. A lot of good coffee shops, restaurants. Uh, it's just kind of a cool um, beachy vibe down there. Pretty laid back. It was also voted the, what, the seventh best place to live in the United States by 24 seven Wall Street. Again, it's probably the most expensive one on the list, but I think Solana Beach is one of my, is actually it is my favorite beach town in all of San Diego. Great beaches. You can get to Del Mar, you can go to Encinitas. Um, you can shoot downtown very quickly. It's only, I think it's about 4,400 people in Solana Beach, so not a huge town. But overall, it's a beach town in San Diego. It's not gonna be cheap. But if you can find a spot in there, uh, it's a great place to live. All right, number six on our list is San Marcos. San Marcos, I always feel like goes a little bit under the radar, maybe because it's so far north. It's kind of on the edge of North County up in San Diego. But it is one of the more affordable places on the list and uh, has one of the best climates in all of San Diego. It's got the average temperature is about 72 degrees all year round. I mean, give or take winter, summer. Uh, it's got some great food options, mainly because the commercial real estate up there is a little bit more affordable than most parts of San Diego. So you get a, a lot of local places and a lot of uh, bigger chains as well. Urge Gastro Pub is a great place up there that has a bowling alley inside of it, which is pretty cool. Um, they have California Coffee Company, Buffalo Wild Wings. I mean, they have a lot of breweries very close by too. Maybe not exactly right in San Marcos, but in Vista, just next door has a ton of breweries up there. So you also have um, Stone Brewery up in Escondido, which is also very close there. So I think it's a very underrated place. Even if you have kids, you got Legoland, probably 10 minute drive away. And the Safari Park might be about a 15 minute drive uh, from San Marco. So pretty centrally located. You also have the Sprinter Metro that goes all the way from Escondido all the way to Oceanside. And there's a stop right in San Marco. So you can actually jump on that uh, train and go all the way to the beach. So that's a good, nice option if you want to sit in the traffic because the traffic on the 78 freeway is not always great, especially at rush hour. But if you're during the day, it's not too bad. Another great thing about San Marcos is the schools are fantastic. It's one of the best school districts in all of California. So I think it was ranked in the top 30 in all of California as, as the San Marcos Unified School District. So another great reason to live in San Diego, especially if you have a growing family. And last but not least on my list is the city of La Mesa. I feel like La Mesa kind of goes a little bit under the radar, so similar to like San Marcos. It's just east of downtown, about nine miles east of downtown, but it's got a very charming feel to it. It's got a great little downtown Main Street. I always love Main Streets. I don't know why. I think it's like a, a movie thing or something, but it's got a great Main Street with nice like local shops. It's very community centric neighborhood. They got like 21 parks and sports fields in the city of La Mesa, which is not a huge city. They also have a lot of events that go on in there. They have a Christmas in a village event. They have a great Oktoberfest down in La Mesa. Um, and then they have like a 50s car show thing they do once a year as well. It's actually one of the more affordable places on the list as well. So a lot of places you can get single family homes there for four or $500,000, which is pretty affordable compared to a lot of San Diego. One, one slight negative of La Mesa is it can get pretty hot there. It's, it's nine miles east of downtown and it's a little bit more inland. So it can get, uh, I think the average temperature there is 85 degrees and it can get up to the hundreds there in the peak summer months. So if you like the heat, then La Mesa is great for you. But if you, you're like me and don't, don't, I don't love hundred degree heat, even if it is a dry heat, then La Mesa may not be perfect for you, but if you want a nice community feel that's kind of that urban suburb, then La Mesa is a good place to check out. So that was our video on the seven best places to live for millennials in San Diego. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If this is your first time to our channel. Please subscribe to our channel as I try to post videos every week. And uh, if you're ever looking to move to San Diego, I would love to help you find your first home. So don't hesitate to call or text me at any time. Thanks for watching. Oh, and check out this video up here because it'll tell you a little bit more about what it's like to live in San Diego. Thanks for watching.